Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, coming down here to Royal Exchange this morning. Thanks for giving us a little bit of your time. Uh, my name is Graham Brown. I'm the managing director at Gyrocom. And the session this morning is about the journey to the software defined data center. Um, Gyrocom are a 10 year old business, but over the last 36 months, we've been moving towards a much more software defined era. We, we were quite fortunate to see some technologies uh, at a very early stage that we felt that would reshape the way that we delivered into the in infrastructure space. Um, so for the last 36 months, we've been building a business to deliver into that software defined world. It's a brave new world. You're going to hear this theme throughout the session this morning about digital, uh, digital strategy. Our view is there is no digital strategy. There's only a strategy in a digital world. You know, things are happening at a pace in our industry, certainly around infrastructure delivery, that we've never seen before. And organizations are really struggling to keep up with new entries into their market. And technology is a real key driver into, in, in, into that step change of delivery. And it's the pace of delivery that is the important piece. You know, we'll see some examples later on. I think Simon uh, from, from, from VMware is going to give us some examples of entire businesses that have had their world turned upside down by organizations that have got runs at an industry that are six to 12 months long, be heavily funded, albeit, but really turning existing business models upside down. And it's technology driven. So at an infrastructure level, and Gyrocom are an infrastructure, are an infrastructure business. The ability to be able to deliver the platform for businesses to innovate is everything to us. And the speed of delivery is everything that, 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 that we're talking about. So we're talking about a dramatic increase in complexity at the core face, but not an increase in complexity around the operational model. In fact, the, 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 the propositions that are coming into, into this space of delivery are actually making the operational model so much easier. They have to, to allow the businesses that where we deploy this, this proposition to innovate at the pace that they need to innovate at. We've got the same old financial constraints. You, you know, IT budgets are flat, if not get, get, getting smaller. So we're being asked to do a lot more with the same or less resources. And that's not a sustainable model. It, it, it's not something that can be sustained if we continue to do the same things over and over again. I think the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect the results to be different. Yeah. So we're having to take different approaches to, uh, uh, to delivery. And the software defined data center is a stepped change in that delivery. It's re-platforming the data center is essentially a really good way of describing what we're trying to, trying to achieve here. And it's not, this is not education in its purest sense anymore. The, the, this delivery is now in production into an increasing number of organizations similar to those represented in this room today. You know, this is real. I think as a business, we saw 2013 and 2014 as very much as an education in, uh, in how this model can be delivered. In 2015, we've seen organizations take a step into production uh, for the software defined data center and immediately, uh, immediately realize the benefits. I think we've got uh, a case study example in the packs that, 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 that are there on the chairs uh, for one of our existing customers. I think again, Simon's going to talk a little bit about a little, little bit about that that piece. But it was a very accelerated journey from nothing to business value in a very short period of time. So, the traditional approach to infrastructure delivery it just doesn't cut the mustard anymore. It, it's the pressures on the business are too 
you know, they're too high and, and the pace of delivery, it costs far too much to deliver in what we would see as being the traditional data center approach, the three tier model, the siloed approach. So we're talking about systems, network and storage. That siloed approach at pace requires a huge amount of resource to be able to keep it, uh, you know, to keep it in line with the business requirements. You know, we, we, we spend talking to customers a long time about the delivery of systems. And it isn't the technology that the, it's the issue, it's the people and the processes and the conversations across those different silo boundaries that cause, that cause delays. You know, VMware's uh, built their business around the server virtualization space. And the technology today means that virtual machines can be created in a matter of seconds and minutes. And yet it still takes organizations months to, you know, sometimes weeks if not months. And, you know, the worst case that we've seen in recent, recent history is six months to deliver an individual virtual machine because of the po policy and the processes that, that go around multiple different entities feeding into what should happen with that. Now, what the Software Defined Data Center is looking to achieve is to automating that. It's to create, we'll talk about a subject called frictionless IT a little bit later in this, in this part of the presentation. So the old model, because of the processes that are required to govern it, to manage it, to put it into an operational place, just can't be sustainable when the business, from, a digi from the digital pressure that the business is facing, uh, is, is applied in real world. It just doesn't deliver in real time. So we're going to talk a little bit about the impact of cloud. And I'm, I'm conscious that we have quite a few people here, and I would imagine that every single one of you have got a different view of what cloud represents. It's a hugely confusing topic. You know, we have infrastructure as a service, we have platform as a service, we have software as a service, we have co-location services that are now being thrown under the marketing banner of cloud. You know, cloud's the best thing that's happened to a co-location provider because you can call yourself something completely different and upsell your value proposition overnight. But the reality is, is that it's all just infrastructure. It's compute, it's storage, it's memory, it's it's the same things that we've been delivering in our own corporate data centers for years. And it's a commodity. Cloud, however, solves a really big problem for organizations. Immediately. And it's one that organizations are struggling <coughs> to get past in their own internal IT delivery. And that's automation and orchestration. So if you look at infrastructure as a service from the major players in the industry, then we're really talking about inbuilt orchestration and, and automation. The business case for cloud is, is that it allows you to start now. So if you've got a company credit card, personal credit card even, you've got, you've got the ability to be able to pay for services, you can immediately deploy compute services at an enterprise grade level of availability within minutes and hours. That level of service is what developers within our organizations have been craving for and they're lapping it up. It's the reason why the infrastructure as a service market has exploded over the last, over the last few years. You can also start small. There's no requirement to go out and buy hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of infrastructure to create a development and test environment. You can throw the infrastructure up in the morning, you can tear it down in the evening, and you can stop paying for it. But it'll also allow you to scale forever, and that's the real dangerous one. Because we're talking about um, the sticker shock of cloud. If you do scale forever in the cloud and you haven't got the appropriate financial controls around it, it can be really quite, you, you, you know, it can be really quite a, a dangerous place to be. But it's still just infrastructure. Your data center, my data center, Amazon's data center. It's the same stuff. So, the 800 pound gorilla is Amazon Web Services in this space at an infrastructure level. 
You know, this is a business that didn't exist 10 years ago. They're a $6 billion business today. They're growing at a rate of 50% year on year, which is an incredible grow growth rate. You know, they are, they've only recently published their financial figures. And what shocked everybody is that there was a lot of press, press discussion about Amazon Web Services losing money and buying business. But they're operating at a margin in excess of 20% annually. So that's delivering infrastructure. It's delivering what we do as a day job. A 20% margin at an incredible volume, at an absolutely incredible volume. And when you take into consideration the fact that the assets that need to be bought to deliver that, 20% margin is absolutely incredible. It's an unbelievable statistic. And the fact that they're growing that margin as time goes on and the rate at which they're capturing customers. They've passed the one million mark in terms of corporate customer relationships, Amazon Web Services, and they are a factor of magnitude that can't really be defined bigger than everybody else in the market. So that's what we're competing against. That's what we're, I say competing against, actually, you know, we're promoting that as an execution venue as a business, actually. But that's what we need to take into consideration to remain relevant in, in this space because that's immediate. That's, that's something that our internal customers can go to this afternoon if internal IT fails. Now, there are some, there are some real gotchas with that. And it isn't cheap. That's, that's the real thing that we need to talk about. You know, the real thing that we need to talk about. This is a business that is operating at 20% margin. The average utilization across AWS is less than 30%. So they get 70p of your pound to be more efficient than you in order to retain a margin as well as building all of the data centers and infrastructures that they need to dominate the world for the years to come. And that's quite a frightening statistic because actually their business model becomes about being more efficient than corporate IT but retaining the benefit of that on the Amazon balance sheet. And it doesn't need to be like that. So what is appropriate for the cloud? Workloads that require elasticity. Because by that very definition, if we, uh, we in our own houses are more efficient, then we should be able to deliver workloads at a lower cost than Amazon Web Services. And I don't think that's a perception that our market has today. The pure economics of it means that actually if we are efficient in our own house, that should be the most, the most cost effective place to deliver predictable workloads. The problem is, is that we have a whole new set of digital applications that aren't predictable. You know, somebody throws an application uh, into the cloud, you know, a born on the web type company. It needs to be horizontally scalable, and you can't predict for how much infrastructure that you need. So the traditional models of delivering that in-house and getting all the investment to cater for that what-if scenario are no, longer, are, are no longer an issue because you know, you can take instances and you can scale it out and you can build it up almost overnight. So it's workloads that require elasticity that are appropriate for, for, for cloud, cloud delivery. So what isn't appropriate for the cloud? And I think this is the key thing. It's the enterprise dirty laundry. It's the stuff that we've all got. It's the database workloads, it's the predictable stuff, it's the Microsoft Exchange, it's the SQL da databases, it's Office in, as an internal delivery, it's the corporate applications. The predictable stuff, the most cost-effective way to deliver that should be in our own house. The enterprise dirty laundry is predictable. It's not exciting. We all have it and it just needs to get done. 
And unless you're a born on the web company, you don't necessarily want to do it in somebody else's house. And I think that's one of the messages that we're trying to give as part of the software defined data center delivery. Because can we take the benefits from the public cloud? So the automation, the orchestration, all of those nice to haves, the scale out piece, and we'll hear some conversations from uh, Stephen Hagen, Nutanix, about the, the, the benefits of the, the, the scale out piece this morning, and apply them to the corporate data. And the answer to that is yes, we can, but not delivering it in the old three tier model in the way that we've done. You know, the network, the systems, the storage, the storage area networking. And that is the software defined data center. So, Gartner predicts that the program, programmatic capabilities of the software defined data center will be considered a requirement for the majority of the largest companies on the planet if they want to deliver a DevOps approach and a hybrid cloud model. So I think the conversations are already going on with, with everybody's organization here about hybrid cloud delivery models. You know, there are things that you want to put in the cloud and there are things that you don't want to put in the cloud. I still think it's a little bit confused about what each of those two things represents. And internally within Gyrocom, we've, we've drawn that definition. Elastic, appropriate for the cloud, predictable internal delivery in the data center because you can do it more efficiently. But for the industry analysts to be predicting it to be a requirement moving forward shows the step change that the benefits of the software defined data center uh, can bring an organization. And we've seen that in production in 2015. So what is in the software defined data center? Server virtualization, software defined storage, and software defined networking, or networking virtualization. That's not all though. You've got automation and orchestration, and that can be quite a difficult one for organizations to get their heads around from an internal skill set because it's, it's something, a little bit more, uh, something a little bit more involved, but getting easier all the time for organizations to deliver. But more importantly than anything else, the software defined data center has to deliver operational simplicity. You have to be able to do more with less, do it quicker, do it at pace, and it, for it to be in an automated delivery. Otherwise, it doesn't deliver the benefit. And an, as an organization, you have to be able to bring all of those things together. So I'll apologize for the, 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 the blatant use of somebody else's logo there. But that is, that, that is the software that is the software defined data center. You've got to bring all of those elements together. So we've, we've, we've looked at this model and we've created an infrastructure timeline. It tends to be a timeline that we see through the majority of companies that, 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 that we talk to. We've got the vendor aligned physical layer. We've got the HPs, the IBMs at the server, the, the server level. You've got the storage appliances. You've got the network appliances. You've got the physical box world. You know, bare metal appliances and a lot of vendor lock-in. You know, once you've made that, that decision, it tends to be the old world, and we're seeing less and less of it as, as, as time moves forward. Server virtualization. The majority of organizations have got a virtualization strategy. We've still today, we very rarely see organizations that are 100% virtualized. But it's becoming increasingly commoditized. You know, apologies to our partner VMware here, but the hypervisor has got serious competition from KVM and Microsoft Hyper-V. And the cost of delivery is actually coming down in that space. But organizations have built a skill set over the last 10 years that tends to be around, you know, the market that VMware have created. Convergence 1.0, and what we mean by Convergence 1.0 is the same three-tier architecture, but delivered as a package. So HP Cloud System Matrix, uh, IBM's variant, VCE, FlexPod, joint ventures of different vendors from storage, network, and compute, delivered as a package, but with one throat to choke. The issue with that is it, it isn't, it's not doing anything in a different way. It's... It is a single throat to choke, which is the benefit of it. It is simple, but it is hugely expensive. Hugely expensive. Network function virtualization. We've been seeing this 
for a number of years now. You know, the firewalls, the network appliances being delivered as a virtual machine. And it now actually tends to be the standard mode of deployment unless you've got very serious performance uh, performance bottlenecks that require some sort of ASIC-based ASIC -based delivery. It isn't software-defined networking, though, and we're still having conversations today about network function virtualization and the confusion between, between that and SDN. This is the critical point for us. I think, I think this is where we feel the journey to the, the software-defined data center starts. It's what we call internally within our business the cloud inflection point. So if you need infrastructure automation, the simple choice is to go to the cloud because it's baked into the, the sort of web shop front delivery that, 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 that you go to. The issue with that is, is that if you take that some workloads are appropriate for the cloud and other workloads are, if you can't get over the infrastructure automation hurdle internally, the tendency is to move your predictable workloads out to the cloud, but you pay a very heavy price for that. So it's the thing that allows you to start now, start small, scale forever. It creates a frictionless IT model. And what we mean by frictionless IT is that actually people come and consume infrastructure. One of the problems with that is that if you don't apply the associated controls to that consumption model, then it can get out of control very quickly and sprawl becomes a very real issue. And it depends on how your organizations define the internal cost of IT because the majority of organizations that we say have this model where actually IT is perceived internally within the business as being a free resource. Hyperconverged infrastructure and software defined storage. So we're seeing a new model in the data center at, um, and, and we're seeing the term replatforming of the data center. This is fundamentally changing the way infrastructure is delivered. It's making it a lot more simple. It's making it a lot more straightforward. It's single click provisioning. It's the thing that used to take forever can now be delivered in a matter of minutes and hours. This allows organization to use commodity components to deliver very complex initiatives with clever software that makes the user interface very, very simple to provision data centers. It also allows you to start very small and to scale out over time. Software-defined networking. One of the challenges that we see with software-defined networking is, is that it wasn't something that organizations needed 18 months ago. And it doesn't replace any other spend. You still need an underlay network. You still need a physical switch within, within your data center. But the overlay network gives you the ability to be able to automate at the network level. So irrespective of how much automation that you want to do at the systems and the storage level, if you have to break the workflow out into a guy to go away and do the firewall rule or a guy to go away and configure a network port, you've still got the same issue. You run into that people issue, you run into that program issue, and the thing that should take minutes then starts to take days and weeks and months. And it's that that costs the business because it's the time to innovation that the business loses. And under the pressure of the sort of the digital age, that's no longer acceptable. Also, distributed security. Software-defined networking is allowing a security model that is completely different. We've all seen the high-profile um, sort of security incidences involved, and it's all about breaching systems and those sort of things. Distributed security model, or as, we, uh, as we're starting to term it, micro-segmentation, applies a security policy to every individual workload. But it does it in a way that's manageable through policy, policy deliverable. So you essentially have a single policy that follows the life cycle of an individual virtual machine or container. When that virtual machine or container is moved, the policy moves with it. But you need software-defined networking as a transport mechanism to allow that to happen. And it's done at the software level. So the security policy is enforced at the software level. When that virtual machine is decommissioned, so is the security policy. So we don't end up having these big tromboning firewalls that, that secure different layers of your data center that have 
you know, security policies that are thousands of line items long that nobody wants to touch, but actually in reality are like Swiss cheese. You know, somebody who knows what they can do can get through them because they haven't been touched or cleaned up in the last five years. We talk about castle versus hotel type of model. So what we mean by that is, is that if you breach the gate to a castle, you've got access to every room in it. In the hotel model, every room has got its own key. And Forrester um, came out with the term zero trust security model. Well, for the first time, that zero trust security model is a viable option for organizations to deploy through software-defined networking and micro-segmentation. Commoditized physical layer. We get a little bit of that with the hyperconverged model and software-defined storage because it's all delivered on standard architecture, typically x86 architecture and commoditized disk. But we're seeing the commoditized physical layer become more of a reality even in the networking space. You know, the, the white box switch vendors, the, the bright box switch vendors, if, 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 if you like. And organizations can deliver their data center infrastructure with, you know, at a very low hardware cost. So it doesn't matter where that comes from. We're seeing a lot of vendors like Supermicro and Quanta and Acton and those guys coming into the market and actually competing with the big tier one IT vendors like HP, uh, IBM, well, it's not IBM anymore in the X86 market, it's now Lenovo. But we're seeing more and more of that. We aren't actually seeing a lot of corporates in the UK take that step into that delivery. There's still this perception about support but I think that becomes less of an issue because all the resilience now is delivered within the software. So actually, the, 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 the commodity hardware model, you know, when it breaks, throw it away because it costs more to get you an engineer there to swap it out for a spare part. So the whole four-hour break-fix model that we've all sort of grown up and loved in the data center, I think is a, it, it, it's, it's a model of the past. And we've got the open source software model. So that's the sort of at the end point where you're delivering on commodity hardware using open source software and being able to deliver your production systems on that environment. We aren't seeing a massive take up associated with that because of the support issues. I think organizations are still a little bit nervous about supporting, uh, supporting their corporate systems out of an open source community. The reality of that is, is actually, you know, some of those communities provide you with better SLAs than some of the vendors in the, in, 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 in the industry. But it's just that nervousness that you could be left on your own, I think, is stopping people from, from taking, taking that leap. So we're not seeing a lot of transition to that as yet. I think over time, however, that will change. So this is the old world or what we see as being the old world. Having said that, this is where we see the majority of the clients that we go and talk to today. Three-tier model, client server architecture, it's been the, the mainstay of the data center over the last sort of 10 to 15 years. This is the new world order. Yeah. This is where incremental value can be derived now. It's the re-platforming of the data center. And it's this where we as a business are now delivering into production environments with customers recognizing the incremental value of it. So, apologies for this, this actually exists now. I got very excited about this, yeah. So this is, this is the Lexus hoverboard, yeah, yeah. Uh, but cloud and SDDC, that might be me being a bit of a geek, but anyway. Cloud and the SDDC enables frictionless IT. We talked about the ability to be able to consume at a low level and then grow out over time. The ability for an organization to consume creates its own problems, however. And I think with the freedom that it gives, it also creates a lot of responsibility. Now that can be controlled. The benefits of the software-defined data center and the pace of delivery and the pressures that the business that we're delivering in you know, it is the way to go. But the word of, you know, the word of warning that we're 
um, that we're providing as a delivery, it needs to be deployed with appropriate controls. And they're logistic controls, they're financial controls, they're processes that need to sit around there, but they're a whole new set of processes that the, organisa that the organisations that are in this room need to look at as you go through this associated journey. We've heard from three vendors that, 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 that play in the SDDC space. Actually, uh, we, we, we've got VMware, Arista and Nutanix together because as an organisation we see that the three propositions are very complementary to each other. There is overlap, um, uh, we definitely see that, but from, from our standpoint we actually see the propositions actually really working together as an overall solution. You know, we're talking about a data center infrastructure with full automation, software defined networking, integrated security in as small as 3U in, in your data center. So the top of rack and then grow it out over time on a consumption type of base model. So as an organization, that's where we live. That's what we're delivering into production for customers. We've seen the London Capital Group uh, case study there. Uh, we're at the early stages of a journey with some other people that are in the room to today, not noting any names, just sort of l looking at a couple of guys there. Um, the benefits of the software-defined data center, it brings a business-focused approach to IT delivery. It's massively simplified management. I, I, that can't be overstated enough, actually. It, it, it's a step changed away you know, there is no LUN configuration. There is none of that, that you, you know. That, albeit we're looking at some very complicated processes under the hood, at the operational level, it's dramatically uh, easier to deliver services because it's that speed that is, that is the issue. So increased speed of delivery. And extends the benefits of automation and orchestration. I think we've talked about that in quite a lot of detail uh, across all of the sessions this, the, the, this morning. So the considerations are people, process, and technology. This is what we, you know, this is what we see as we've gone on the journey with customers into production environments within, uh, within this space. You know, the more of a consideration for you guys to look at as you start to consider these things. The skills, challenging preconceptions, you know, that's a big deal. You know, we've spent 15 years delivering IT in the data center in a certain way. Yeah, we have to unlearn some of those things because there is a better way. Roles and jobs functions are consolidating and Stephen mentioned uh, in the hyperconverge site, you know, people are being able to come away from the infrastructure and focus a little bit more at the application, the thing that truly adds value to the business. And it would be great to get away from the internal politics, but I don't think you ever can, but I, you know, we'll, leave it, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, process tends to be actually the most complicated part of delivery for the SDDC. Defining the service catalogue, defining the things as a business you want to replicate and you want to automate. Uh, workflow design, making sure that you've got the appropriate governance around, uh, around the delivery of this. And perhaps more important than anything else, as you move to this frictionless IT model, having the financial controls to make sure that um, you know, things don't get away from you as an organization because it is a consumption model. People can come to the web storefront and consume resources and they're not free, whether they're in the, the public cloud or whether they're in your own data center. You know, having the appropriate controls to be able to do that. The technology actually is, is the straightforward part. You know, Challenging the technology silos, bringing those together, trying to avoid the vendor lock-in type of question. You know, you don't want to make a decision today that you're going to regret in six to 12 months. Choice and misinformation. There's a huge amount of fear, uncertainty and doubt. Again, going back to Stephen's presentation, you saw the share price of some of those traditional sort of storage. You know, that's happening for a reason. The market is saying that actually this is not the way that we see the future delivering infrastructure. It's that locking, it's that traditional 3T. Now, of course, when you get the people through the door, you're gonna get a lot of information because people are looking for their jobs, you know, looking for their livelihoods. 
looking at delivering it the way that they've made hay over the last 10 to 15 years. But I think we're going to see a huge difference in the landscape of the vendors moving forward across the next 10 years than we have across the last 10 years. The Software Defined Data Center provides incremental value to a business. And the priority should be around delivering in minutes that which used to take months. Taking six months to deliver a virtual machine adds no value to the organizations in which we all work. Because actually it's only at the process where that machine is available for use that the value starts to create. Now, the choice that an organization, for the first time an organization does have choice with cloud, is to go and get that somewhere else if the time frames are too. So it's about m remaining relevant as well. So the priorities are changing. It's about the pace of delivery. It's about the ability to be able to serve the organizations for which we all work. So common pitfalls. So these are our experiences over the last sort of 24 months where, where we see that projects either stall or you, you know, come to some very difficult conversations. Keeping a focus on the business value and not getting lost in the technology. You, you, you know, from an IT standpoint, we've lived in a technology world for so long. It's very easy to start focusing about what this box does or what this piece of software does or what that does. Actually, the time to business value in terms of delivering infrastructure quickly is actually the thing that we, we, we should be focusing on. Being able to challenge preconceived ideas with thought out you know, thought out discussions and use cases of how this, this sort of approach is already in production. Spending too long weighing up the options. There's a huge amount of choice out there, huge amount of choice. And if you go out and address the whole market, we'll still be having this conversation in 24 months time. And then the market will all, of, of, of all change. The pace, again, this comes back to keeping the focus on the business value. How do I deliver that today with something that is real. Creating a science project, we see this over and over again. Yeah, Delving into something and spending 18 months figuring out how something works. You know, we have this conversation about OpenStack all the time and we as a business have an OpenStack capability within our business, but OpenStack is a complicated animal. And if you don't understand, it, it's essentially 15 products bundled into an overall package. The delivery of OpenStack is becoming easier. It's been packaged, but it's a science project because actually looking after the interfaces into your existing infrastructure, it's an incredibly difficult thing to do unless you've got a huge engineering workforce with the ability to dedicate their lives to delivering it. So actually we go back to keeping a focus on the business value. How do I get the benefits of something like an OpenStack brain quicker, sooner, now, trying not to boil the ocean. Um, you, you know, we talked, uh, you, 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 you raised a question uh, about, well, we've got this and we've got this and we've got this. Well, in a large environment, there's always going to be exceptions. You know, there are, there are always exceptions that, that don't quite fit the model. But actually, we should be looking at it from a glasses half full perspective. So, what are the expect you know, what what are what, what are the the environments that we can use this technology because it's a fundamentally step change, different way forward to be able to use it over here, and actually over time move away from those sort of legacy architectures that keep us shackled to this three tier model. Thinking the SDDC isn't appropriate to you. The SDDC is appropriate to everybody. It's replatforming the data center. It's unlearning the way that we've delivered IT for the last 15 years and adding incremental value to the business. Whether it be one application, whether it be thousands, it's still appropriate. So we as an organization, we are SDDC experts. We've been doing this for 36 months. We've been living and breathing. We took a leap into this market at an early stage. And as a consequence of that, we're very well positioned to deliver production environments today. The services that we provide, you know, we've 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 really covered, you, you know, we've really covered um, 
dur during the overall sessions. Y you know, this, th these slides will be available for everybody here. Please take a look at your leisure. If you think there's a requirement, come and talk to us. I think the, the partners that, that we work with, obviously we've had three of our partners um, uh, present today, uh, which has been brilliant. We have built an ecosystem that fits together. We've chosen our partners very well. So actually, there are a further set of complementary technologies that we work with. And that's building all of the time. We, you know, we had a, a bit of an ethical discussion as to whether or not we should look at some of the ones that we're looking to build into the portfolio in 2016. But for the sake of space, we left them off because that's quite a nice and tidy slide. So it's, uh, um, but you know, security in there with Palo Alto, load balancing with F5. Uh, looking at the cloud with VMware and Software, and you know, we talked a little bit about vCloud Air today. VM Turbo from a monitoring perspective, Infobox from a DDI standpoint, Canonical as an open stack as a service type of, type of proposition. So, we've got experience of delivering this today. It's real, you know, start your data center in as small as 3U with the three vendors in the room today. But I'm going to close on the eight most expensive words in IT because we've always done it that way. Yeah? There is nothing truer. Yeah? And I mentioned it earlier. If you continue to do the same things, you'll continue to get the same results. Yeah? So actually, I appreciate that there's an element of a you know, really appreciate all of you coming out and listening to us today. We've tried to keep it as a sort of the reason why as opposed to a direct, direct product pitch. But from our side of things, it is quite a challenge to sort of get time with you on a one-to-one -one basis where we can impart some of this knowledge. So I'm going to leave you with this and I'll let everybody take, take away with that what, 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 what they will.